Which is better for fat loss? High intensity interval training or low intensity steady state cardio? I am gonna answer that question for you in this video. First of all, very quickly, subscribe to the channel if you haven't done already because that means you are doing a good deed for the day. You're probably gonna win the lottery. You're definitely gonna get uh, lots of chocolate eggs for Easter and give the video a thumbs up if you enjoy it and it helps you out. So high intensity interval training is where you would pick one piece of cardio equipment. For example, you could do this on a spin bike. You could pick to do it on battle ropes. You could even do it on a rowing machine or some people now like to do it on a track pushing a sled with weights on. And say for example, you were gonna go with the spin bike. How to perform hit, you would pick a time scale. Let's give it an example. 10 to 20 minutes of high intensity is normally a good time for the entire cardio session. So you went on the spin bike, chose to do your hit session for 10 minutes on the spin bike. You would start off warming the legs up 30 seconds up to two minutes into a normal pace of what we would call 65, 70% of your maximum heart rate max where you go in a steady pace, okay? Then after that 30 seconds to two minutes, bang, 15, 20 seconds, maximal effort, 100% like um, someone has stolen your puppy and you need to chase them down the street, okay? You need to get that puppy back to snuggle and watch Netflix. You are gonna cycle your goddamn legs off as fast as possible, 100%. Then after that 15 to 20 seconds, you will slow it back down again, 30 seconds to two minutes, recovery, normal pace, then, after the 30 seconds to two minutes, however long it takes you to recover. Back again, cycling 15 to 20 seconds, 100% maximum effort. It's no good doing 80% effort. It needs to be 100% maximum effort, 15, 20 seconds. Any longer than that, it, research out there shows it's not as effective longer than 20 seconds maximum effort, okay? You should say take as long as it takes to recover, but you don't really want to be doing it. Um, the recovery phase longer than two minutes when you're slowing the legs back down. Then obviously you would keep doing that until the 10 minutes is up. And you could choose to do this on any piece of cardio equipment from the examples given. It's probably more, you could even do sprints on a treadmill. So that is how you should perform HIT for best results. Now let's look at the advantages of Hit if you choose to do that as your form of cardio. So high intensity interval training tends to be more time efficient, meaning you could burn the same amount of calories in a hit session in 20 minutes compared to doing 40, 60 minutes walking slowly on an incline on a treadmill. Okay, now I'm gonna show some studies um, about this a little bit further on into the video, but the majority of the time, high intensity interval training tends to be very good for time. Um, so you can literally get into the gym. If you're short on time, you're very busy, have a very, have a very busy schedule, HIT might be a good choice, okay? Because um, you're doing it in intervals, um, a recovery phase, working hard, maximum, usually 20 minutes. Uh, another advantage of performing HIT is it's very enjoyable. So um, it's enjoyable because it's different, okay? Um, and people tend to stick to things that they enjoy. So a key thing for me when it comes to fat loss is adherence, okay? How, how much commitment are you gonna give towards your goal? Are you going to stick? to um, a diet, for example. You know, sometimes people don't stick to diets because 
you know, they are restricting themselves of things they like too much. So if you really hate hit, you really hate pushing yourself in intervals, um, and you don't like doing, you know, things like battle rope, sled pushes, um, high intensity, low intensity, then hit might not be a good choice for you, okay? Another advantage of HIIT training is it's an anaerobic form of exercise. Like weight training or like resistance training, anaerobic means without oxygen. So it improves your VO2 max. Now your VO2 max is the amount of oxygen that your lungs can take in at one time. So the capacity inside your lungs to take in as much oxygen as possible. Obviously, the more oxygen you can take into your lungs, the better the train, the healthier, the fitter, then the more that is gonna improve your fitness and overall health, the more oxygen you are able to take into your lungs at one time. Okay, so that is a huge health benefit of performing HIIT as well. Another big benefit of HIIT training is because it's similar to resistance training, it's very stop, start, stop, start it tends to increase your metabolism. It tends to have that benefit because, again, it is similar to weight training. There are some studies and quite a bit of research out there showing things like sprints tends to also have a positive effect on um, anabolic hormone responses, which basically means it will help or help aid muscle hypertrophy as long as you're in a calorie surplus and your weight training, your programming is all correct. All those things together should go pretty well. Another big benefit of HIIT training is the big one called EPOC. So that's the short word for excess post-exercise oxygen consumption. Glad we got that out of the way. So what that means is basically the afterburn effect, which means you're not just burning calories in that cardio session itself, you can carry on burning calories all throughout the rest of the day. So you're probably thinking to yourself, well, I may as well just do HIIT because you can burn the calories in that session, then you can sit at home, watching neighbors, eating Ben and Jerry's, and you'll still be burning calories throughout the whole day. Well, let me tell you, it isn't quite that exaggerated because as I can show you now uh, with this particular study, you will see that only six to 15% of the overall calories that you burn in that session will carry on being burned through the rest of the 24 hour period. Now, if you think that you've burned 800 calories in a session, which is quite a lot in itself, then you will only burn around 80% extra calories in the rest of the 24 hours, which isn't that much for the afterburn effect, is it? Um, so, obviously it concludes that depending on the intensity and duration of the HIIT session, that will probably make the percentage of the calories burnt in the afterburn differ. However, the majority of the time and the majority of studies say that it's usually anywhere between six to 15% of overall calories that has actually burnt even the fat loss expert himself, Lionel McDonald, shows that in one of his studies as well. So, you know, as a lot of things in fitness, it's in context. It depends how hard you train, how long for. Um, but I would say the afterburn effect, um, it does vary, but it's not really going to be that much the majority of the time. You're not really going to burn that many calories afterwards. So the disadvantages of HIIT training would be, number one, it's not an ideal form of cardio if you are not very mobile. You know, if you always have aches and pains in your joints, you know, you're not gonna be doing 
10 burpees and then you know 12 box jumps then rest for a minute 10 burpees 12 box jumps things like that you're not really going to be up for um, doing basal ropes as fast as you can and as slow as you can if you have a lot of elbow pain or bad, sh bad uh, sh shoulder mobility Ugh, got it out again um, so that would be one disadvantage for doing hit another disadvantage is um, it's not very good if you are someone who is doing five to six weight training sessions a week and those weight training sessions in particular um, contain a lot of volume so you're doing a lot of sets reps intensity um, it wouldn't be wise to do good proper hit sessions um, in in that week at the same time when you have a lot of volume and you weight training because it could have a negative effect on how well you are going to perform in the weight room and that is the most important thing when it comes to building muscle and losing fat is actually calories and the weight training that you're doing. So when, who and how often should you do a hit? Well, like a lot of things in fitness, it needs to be taken into context. It depends, okay? So I can give you a few examples. If you are, you know, clinically obese, um, to the point where you can't do um, much heavy loading on the joints, heavy impact, you know, um, but maybe mentally you feel like you could do a hit session. Choose the right type of hit session, like, you know, um, on a spin bike might be a good one because you're constantly just moving the cogs and then slowing it back down. Um, a treadmill sprinting wouldn't be a good idea, probably. Um, maybe battle ropes might be a good idea, because you're just moving the arms, okay? Um, bearing in mind you don't have joint pain in the elbows. And then a step down from that, you've got someone who's just slightly overweight, you've got someone who is lean with some muscle mass who's used to training. Obviously, if you know if your body is able to do that high intensity exercise or not. Um, now, when I would say is a big one because when you should do HIT kind of depends on how intense and the days your weight training sessions are. For example, if on a Friday you're gonna train legs and it's a big, heavy ass, high volume leg day, might not be good to um, go on the spin bike, okay? So you could do hip, but you could choose battle ropes, different type of high intensity cardio. So depending on the muscle worked and how fatigued that muscle is, that is when to choose the right type of hip equipment. Also, um, I would say if you are not doing much weight training, that's an ideal time to do hit on the days or on the days of rest because you could do 10, 15, 20 minutes of hit on your days when you're not doing weight training. That would be a good idea. Um, also, a lot of people when they are bulking tend to have a lot of high calories, high carbs, a lot of glycogen in the muscle. So you have a lot of energy for your muscles to be able to form high intensity interval training. So, and again, um, obviously because it is so similar to weight training off season, or when people are looking to put on muscle, you have high calories and carbs. That is another good time when to do high intensity interval training as your form of cardio. Might not be as wise to do it, when you have very low calories, very low glycogen and low carbs, because HIIT training is an anaerobic form of exercise, which means without carbs, no, sorry, which means without oxygen. And you have something called an ATP system in your body, which is, sorry, 
So because HIIT training is a form of anaerobic exercise, that means without oxygen. And in your body, you have an ATP system, which basically is the energy that gets sent to your muscles when they need to be used to move and contract. So when you are doing a fast form of cardio, like battle rope and sled pushing, row machine as fast as you can, those muscles are contracting very quickly, so the ATP system can't get oxygen quick enough, so it has to use another fuel source, which it will get from glycogen. So if you're having a lot of glycogen, if you're doing something called carb cycling, where you're having a high carb day, low carb day, high carb day, low carb day, the day after the high carb day might be a good time to do your HIIT training session. The day after a very low carb day, probably not a good idea to do your HIIT training session. So again, it depends. And it also depends how often to do that HIIT training session. Um, you know, um, if you are not doing that many weight training sessions again, you can get away with two, three HIIT training sessions a week. Um, but again, that depends how many calories, how much glycogen you have, your energy levels. Um, if you're doing a lot of weight training sessions, um, but you don't have time to do an hour on a treadmill, then it might also be a good time to do, you could get away with one or one or two hit sessions a week because you're doing so much weight training. But the key is, energy balance calories in versus calories out is the key to fat loss so now let's take a look at less low intense steady state cardio again what is it how you should perform it and then we can compare hitting this together with some studies evaluate it and see which one is going to be more effective for fat loss so, low intense steady state cardio is basically the opposite to high intense cardio. So, in more detail, things like walking outdoors, incline walking on terrain, walking on a treadmill, incline, maybe even jogging, light jogging to an extent, those are forms of very low intensity steady state cardio. Now, that is obvious how it should be performed. Um, you know, normally though, again, it depends on what your goals are, how much body fat you actually have, how lean you are, um, your metabolism, muscle mass, how much of that cardio you should actually do. Um, but Normally, in the fitness world, people would do at least three sessions of 30 minutes steady state cardio a week. You know, maximum, normally 60 minutes of steady state cardio, um, three to six times a week. Um, then, the pros of low intense steady state cardio it's leisurely, it's not very taxing, it's not very hard work, it's convenient. You can uh, look at nude pictures of your girlfriend or boyfriend whilst you're walking at the same time. You can scroll through Facebook, you can scroll through your Instagram feed. You know, you can do that while you're doing incline cardio, or sorry, steady state cardio. You can't do that when you're doing um, kettlebell swings and sprints can you so that's the convenience of low intensity day to day cardio um some other pros are because it is low intensity you're normally walking at 65 to 70 percent of your maximum heart rate max and research shows that at that low intensity it is aerobic exercise which means your body is using oxygen to burn fat, something called lipolysis, which is where 
your body utilizes oxygen to break down fat into fatty acids and gives you energy so you are losing more body fat in the actual low intense steady state cardio session more than doing hits when you're actually utilizing more glycogen and carbs so the good thing is you are you are burning fat for fuel in that session you're burning more body fat another huge benefit of low intense steady state cardio is your overall health and fitness okay um your cardio it is also good for your visceral fat now visceral fat is the fat that you cannot see it's the fat that's around the organs so losing body fat overall is going to help contribute to burning visceral fat around the organs as well as well as some things within your diet but we're not going to get too complicated into that so cardio is good or LIS is good for that as well now what are the cons the disadvantages of doing low intense steady state cardio well especially if muscle hypertrophy is a goal of yours. Doing too much low intense steady state cardio actually contributes to a lot of cortisol production. And when do you get cortisol? Usually when you stress too much, what does cortisol do? It is catabolic, which means it breaks things down. So what's it gonna break down? Well. It's going to break down all sorts in your body but when it comes to muscle mass it's going to break down protein it's going to break down muscle which obviously is going to have a big effect when you are trying to build muscle in stripping you of that mass so that is why doing too much low intense steady state cardio has a negative effect on muscle mass muscle hypertrophy so finally, let's take a look at how much more body fat you do actually burn with HIIT compared to LIS. So let's take a look at this study. So this first one is just an article on vice.com and it was recommended on Twitter by Dr. Brad Schoenfeld, who is highly respected in the fitness industry, uh, knows everything to know about hypertrophy and fat loss and they found that 31 studies that scientists analyzed on the topic found both methods of high intensity cardio and steady state resulted in the same fat loss. Um, also taking away a lot of the long standing notion that high intensity intervals may burn more body fat. So this next one is on the PubMed website and it is a systematic review and meta-analysis of interval training versus moderate intensity continuous training on body adiposity, which is basically how much body fat you are holding. Um, so basically they did uh, a meta-analysis during a four week duration and the analysis is the uh, meta-analysis were conducted for within group and between group comparisons for total body fat percentage and fat mass and then after the whole analysis hit or sprint interval training appears to provide similar benefits to the moderate intensity for body fat reduction although not necessarily in a more time efficient manner however neither short term HIIT or sprint interval training or moderate intensity training produced clinically meaningful reduction in body fat. Now we're going to cover one more reason which is people tend to do HIIT because they think they can burn the same amount of calories as a list session but in less time. So for example doing 15-20 minutes of HIIT could burn the same amount of calories as a 60 minute list session so let's look at this study and as you can see um, it states that the individuals that perform the hit could burn the calories in 40 percent less time now one thing i want to point out is these individuals were overweight obese adults the other thing is i couldn't really find that many studies on 
um, hit having a significant um, difference in fat loss when it comes to doing it in less time. The other thing is most of the studies where um, you can burn some body fat in a hit session as lits but in less time is with overweight to obese individuals. It's not the case for all people, for people who are a little bit leaner, people who have muscle mass. But yes, I do agree that high intensity interval training probably is slightly better for time and it does burn slightly more calories. So to summarize, I do think high intensity interval training is slightly better in regards to it improves your overall fitness and your VO2 max. It's enjoyable. Also, it does have a slight time edge and I do think you will burn slightly more calories throughout the day, although most research shows it's only six to 50% more of the calories that were burnt in that actual session. And I think you could only burn the same amount of calories in that hit session in less time than the low intense steady state cardio session as long as your calories your macros are on point and that you perform that hit session correctly say 20 minutes and again with the maximal intervals being 15 to 20 seconds 100% maximum effort. So I believe that if you have the time, you are lean enough, fit enough, enjoy it. Hit probably slightly beats low intense steady state cardio, but they both have the place. Um, and it's up to you depending on those things that I've given you today. So it's up to you to make an educated decision which one is best for you. Sometimes I do low intense steady state cardio, sometimes I do HIT, depending normally on what my calories and what my diet's like and how far into prep I might be. So do hope it helped. Take that information on board. Thank you very much for watching today's video. And don't forget to subscribe, give it a thumbs up if you haven't done already, and I will see you soon.